Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can connect two network switch together. In some application, we may need to connect one switch to another, such like we just have a new setup in a new location. Usually, we can use the CAT6 Ethernet cable like this one to connect two switch. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can use the fiber optic cable to connect one network switch to another. Moreover, I also will show you how you can use the two network ports from one switch and connect to another network switch. Eventually, we are going to get two gigabyte per second bandwidth instead of one gigabyte per second. Okay, now let's move to the washer and see how we can get this job done. I've listed the item in the description below. You can click the link to find detail. First, let's see what we have in this system. This is the second PoE switch. One of the camera, this is PoE IP camera is attached to this switch. You can see the data port and the power port is being on. That means the PoE switch is supplying the PoE for this camera. And now let's move to the first switch. And this switch, this is first switch. It comes with some SIP slot. Also, there's some RJ45 network port. One of the port, this cable is coming from the network video recorder. So if these two switch is being working together correctly, we're supposed to see the live video, this camera's live video on the monitor, right? That's the way we can verify they're working correctly. The simple way is you, we can use this CAT6 Ethernet cable. But I'm not going to demonstrate it because it's quite simple. We just need to pick one of the RJ45 network port on both sides and link them together. But one thing I would like to point out, the maximum distance between these, these two switches is limited to about 328 feet. If the distance is beyond 328 feet, you need to use some extension solution. You can reference my another video about how to use the PoE standard to repeat the data network. Okay, now as what we said, we need to use the fiber optic cable. And this is the Prismic fiber optic cable. You can see there's the connector is being made in the factory. So I don't need to deal with the fusion job in the field. It's the LC connector, simply plug and play it. And there's duplex, one is A, another is B. Okay, let's just move to one of the, here, let's work close. This is the SRP slot. We're supposed to work with the fiber optic cable. But you can see we cannot connect the fiber optic cable directly to the SRP slot, right? It's, it's simply just empty. The reason is because we still need this SRP transceiver. You see, this is the SRP transceiver and it will convert the electronic signal to fiber optic signal. Okay, now let me just pick one and also use the last port, let's just pick the port number 10. And now, SAP transceiver is ready. I'm going to get one of the fiber optical. This is num the A, connect to the A. Okay, now let's move to the second sw switch. Also need to pick one of the SAP slot. Let's take the last one, it's the port 18. Okay, and here, as I use the A on the other, on the one side, so I need to make sure it's also the A, the same cable, otherwise it's not gonna work. Let me plug in. Okay, once I plug in, you can see the video is live now. You can see the camera's live. This is my hand. Okay, I'm moving the camera. So one of the advantage of the fiber optic cable is it, it has very low latency. It's, you see, one plug in, you can see the video just pop up immediately. And another feature of the fiber optic cable is about long distance. You, you can achieve up to 10 kilometers, that's no problem. Okay, the one thing we are thinking, you see, we just, you may wonder why we just need sing, single fiber optic cable, right? Usually we need two cables, one for transmit, and another for receiving, but here we are using just single fiber optic cable. The reason is because we are using the BIDI fiber optic SAP transceiver. It uses the different wavelength to transmit and receive the data. So sing, single fiber optic cable will be enough. Now, now what, like what we said before, is it possible we can use another fiber optic cable to connect to second port in period? So we got, we're going to double up the bandwidth, right? Let's try it. So now I'm going to use second pair of fiber optic cable. Let's just connect to the second SAP slot. So we got another fiber optic cable and connect here. Okay, let's move to the sec first PoE first switch. Okay, now also pick one of the SRP slot and then connect to the fiber optic cable. 
Once I connect in, now let's see, there's one thing happened. The, the time is not moving. That means the camera is freezing. Let me move the camera. No. Yes, the camera is freezing. Yeah, like what we expect, it's not going to work directly if we use the two cable to link to switch the directory. What's the problem? The problem is it's going to create the broadcasting stone. I'm not going to go into detail about the broadcasting stone. But basically, they're going to send message to each other and it creates a dead loop. They just keep sending the message like the date about the Mac, Mac address they're sending to each other. The thing to get this word, we need to configure these two switch, tell them these two ports belong to the same link it, about the port aggregation. They belong to the same intelligence, they don't need to send the message to each other. So I need to log into this switch and configure this switch. Okay, now let me get the PC computer and just log into this switch and make the change to this switch. First, we need to connect the computer to the switch. Okay. Just pick one of the RJ45 network port. And now let's move back to the computer. We need to go to the web server of the switch. Okay, just let's input the IP address of the web server. It will take a while before we can see the login page because we, I didn't disconnect the fiber optic cable that still stay in the dead loop. Okay, now this is the login page. Let me log in. Meanwhile, I'm going to record the full screen to show you. Okay. Here we need, we are looking for the port channel configuration, this one. This is port channel configuration. And we move to the first one. And we need to have the group number. Now we do have one group number. We just, I'm going to use the first one. And I'm going to add the member. From here, I need to add the, this two port, the last two port which is working with the fiber optic cable to the same group. So the switch will know they're working each other, they're not going to send a message to each other. Okay, I'm going to add the 17, now add the 18. Okay, both ports have been adding to the same group, and the last thing is safe and easy. I'm going to do the same thing for the first, second switch. Okay, okay let's move to the second switch. I have configured these two switch and tell them these two ports working together. You can see now we still have two fiber optic cable link to the second switch. And from here we also have two fiber optic link to the first switch. And the video is live. Now you see the video is live. Right? And inventory we have two gigabyte per second bandwidth between these two links from the first switch to the second switch. And there not only can improve the bandwidth, but also you can see there's, we have a redundancy link. Let's, let's run a test. I just remove one of the switch and let's see what will happen. Let me just remove the first, first cable. Once I remove, you can see the, the video is still live, right? That means still working. That's the benefit by using the band, uh, LAN aggregation. Even one of the link is done, you still have another link working. Can we just put more fiber optic cable to improve the bandwidth? Of course, it's quite simple. Just need to have more fiber optic cable to link these two switch and then configure the switch tell them all these ports are working together and it will be fine. All right, that's all for today's video. If you have any question, please post it in the comment section below. See you next time.